Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of Let's Talk Taino. I'm Priscilla Colon, creative and co-founder here at Casarito, where our mission is to promote the Taino language and culture. Today, I have a really fun topic that I've been dying to talk about. Was Avatar about Tainos? And the answer is heck yes it was, but it wasn't until I started doing some really good research on the way that Tainos really were, their spirituality, their culture, that I realized, whoa, a lot of that was included in the movie. So, first question, were the Navi really Tainos? Well, the answer is yes, because James Cameron, who directed the movie, actually said that he used the encounter between the Europeans and the Native Americans, <laughs> Tainos, um, as the basis for the movie, except that he just, you know, put it into outer space and said, okay, the people we're encountering are aliens, right? Huge kudos to them for choosing uh, Zoe Saldana, who played the lead character. And Zoe Saldana is Haitian, Dominican, and Puerto Rican. So I don't know how more Taino you can get. I mean, I guess if you like add a little Jamaican and Cuban in there. Um, so they chose the perfect person to be the lead actress in this movie. So, so let's take a look at some of the more obvious similarities first between the Navi in the movie and the Tainos. Clothing, for example. In the movie, you see the Navi, they wear, wear very little clothing. You know, they wear loincloth and their chests and breasts are uncovered. Let's take a look at Tainos. Again, they wore very little, if nothing, most of their lives, especially as children. It's very hot in the Caribbean. It's like average 80 degrees and it can get upwards of 90 and 100. So yeah, you're going to adapt the way that you dress to where you live. Then as they got older, uh, men tended to wear loincloth and in Taino the word is guayuco. And the women usually wore nothing until they got married. And then when, once they were married, they would wear what's called a nagua. And a nagua was like a little cotton skirt that they wore um, to cover up. Uh, this was only usually worn by married women. And if you were of a certain rank, um, you would wear a longer cotton skirt. And there were even some cacique, their chiefs, who would wear nagua, like a really long flowing skirt. So another very obvious thing to compare between the movie and Taino civilization were things like their weapons. So the Navi, for example, had bows and arrows, knives, axes, spears, a lot of stone and wooden weapons and instruments. The Tainos also had bows and arrows. Now, you would be surprised to find out that actually they tipped a lot of them with poison. A few videos ago, I talked about the yuca, which was the main crop of the Taino. So the liquid within the yuca is actually poisonous, and they would add that poison to arrows. Another thing they would do is take the barbs from stingrays and add them to the tips of their arrows or spears. And not only would those barbs impale people, but they also contain bacteria, so it made them poisonous. So don't believe this weird like story that Tainos were so such peaceful people that they all died. Um, that's not actually true. I mean, yes, they were very diplomatic. Don't get me wrong. They, they would uh, prefer to solve things diplomatically before just engaging in war. Other weapons that the Tainos had included knives made from stone and clam shells and they would be used as cutting instruments whether for everyday work or for engaging in combat the same thing with axes so they made these axes from stone and conch shells as well the Tainos also had spears with fish hooks at the end but the deadliest weapon that they had of all was called makana and the makana is a wooden club. So it's literally made from a solid piece of wood and you couldn't get anywhere near that. So hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Tainos had it down. There are stories um, written by the Spanish uh, conquistadores um, where they talk about the fact that they really can't engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat because one blow from the Macana would crush a man's skull within his metal helmet. So this was really 
uh, the weapon of choice. And actually, in some Brazilian tribes, the word macana actually means to kill. So another obvious similarity between the Nabi and the Taino is where they slept. So you'll notice in the movie that the Nabi um, slept in hammocks. And of course, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that the word hamaca is the original Taino word for it. And it was just borrowed. It became part of almost every language in the world. So speaking of Taino words, uh, in the movie, you may have caught that there was another Taino word that was used, and that is the word for chief. They say cacic in the movie. It is the anglicized uh, version of cacique, which means leader of the land. And if you've watched previous videos, we talk about the origin of the word. And we also talk about some of the chiefs that the Taino had, male and female. While we went through all of those comparisons, we also learned new Taino words. So let's check them out. Guayuco, which is loincloth. Nagua, skirt worn by married women. Macana, a wooden club, hamaca, hammock, and cacique, chief or chiefess. One thing in the movie that you kind of may have chalked up to Hollywood magic was bioluminescence. And that is that kind of glow in the dark quality that a lot of the plants and animals and even the Navi themselves had. So I'm not saying that Thainos glowed in the dark, but bioluminescence or the ability to produce light uh, can be found all over the Caribbean and it's one of the coolest features. If you ever want to go explore bioluminescence uh, bays, you can find a lot of them in the Cayman Islands. Cool fact, um, Cayman is actually from the Taino word Cayman, which means crocodile. You can also find uh, bioluminescent bays in Jamaica, Yamayeca, and in Puerto Rico, Boriquen. Now, in these bioluminescent bays, what happens is that there are little plankton in the water. And as you disturb the water, you move through it, the creatures start producing the light. So you get these really cool colors in the water. Um, so that whole thing about like stepping around at night and things are lighting up, it actually does happen. It happens in many places around the world, but it is a really cool feature of the Caribbean. Speaking of bioluminescence, the Taino had a very special relationship with fireflies. Now fireflies are a bioluminescent creature. They produce their own light. So in Taino, the word for light is cuyo. And the word for firefly is cocuyo. And they use this creature in amazing ways. So they would gather a bunch of cocuyo and they would release them in a house where there were a lot of mosquitoes. And because fireflies eat the mosquitoes, it was basically acting as a mosquito repellent. Uh, the other thing they did was they would gather them up and use cocuyo, the fireflies, as light to light their homes at night so they can continue working at night. So one important thing that you may have noticed about the Navi was their relationship with trees. So trees were very important to them and they had such a huge respect for trees. So they had their home tree, their tree of souls, and the tree of voices. And the trees allowed them to communicate with their creator, Ewa, and also allowed them to communicate with their past ancestors. This was actually one of the most eye-opening for me when I started researching Taino culture, was how similar Tainos um, thought about their spirituality and their connection um, with trees and nature as a whole. Now, the word for tree in Taino is Yabisi. And the reason why trees were important is because according to Taino spirituality, trees inhabit all three realms. The branches extend up to the spirit world above. This is the world of the creator. The trunk is the part of the realm that is with us, the living. And the roots of the tree extend downward toward the land of past or dead ancestors. So a tree serves as a communicator between all three realms. Taino's relationship with the trees are so sacred that they would literally ask a tree um, if it could be cut down and 
what it should be used for. They truly believe that trees have the souls of dead ancestors, so they wouldn't go around chopping down trees nilly-willy. So every tree was sacred to the Thainos, but there was one tree above all that was thought to be the daughter of the creator. So that is the Seba tree. In English, it's called the silk cotton tree. The creator for the Thainos is called Yaya. The word Ya means spirit, and Yaya can mean supreme spirit, spirit of all spirits, or great spirit. And you know that our Native American cousins in the North use the word great spirit for the creator. And she's also thought to be the handmaiden, or the helper of Atabe. And Atabe, sometimes called Atabeira, means mother of the waters. She is the mother of all of us humans, and she's the female personification of Yaya. So there is a Seba tree on Vieques Island, Vieques for those of you who saw my previous video, that is known to be at least 400 or more years old. The Spanish chroniclers around the time of Christopher Columbus's um, arrival even wrote about this old tree. So you can imagine how ancient this sacred tree is. So this brings me to the end of my video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, I want you to go back and watch Avatar again and start picking out those similarities between the Navi and the Taino. While we went through all of those comparisons, we also learned new Taino words, so let's check them out. Cuyo, light. Cocuyo, firefly. Ya, spirit. Ya, ya. Great Spirit or Supreme Spirit, Yabisi, Tree, Seba, Silk Cotton Tree, Atabe, Mother of the Waters. I hope that you learned a little bit more about our Taino ancestors, that you learned about their spirituality, their deep respect for nature as a whole, uh, and their love of Mother Earth. So, uh, thank you again for tuning in. Taikara Yaguaitia. I'll see you next time.